Greetings everyone. This presentation is done by Professor Manjiri Joshi from Dr. D. Y. Patil Institute of Hotel Management and Catering Technology, Pune. And this video is regarding Chapter Purchasing System, a third year BSCHS. The expenses for housekeeping purchase are planned mainly in the form of a capital budget or an operating expense budget. The purchase can be of a local or important items. Efficient purchasing practices can make a sufficient contribution to the executive housekeeper's role in controlling expenses. Housekeeping department coordinates with the purchase department for all its purchase. Purchase is a function concerned with the search, selection, buying, receipt, storage and final use of a commodity in accordance with the policy of an establishment. There are three main criteria on which the purchasing is done. Price, quality, and delivery performance. Next slide explain about the principles of purchasing. The primary principles of purchasing that need to be upheld by the housekeeping and purchase department are right quality, right quantity, right price, right time, and right source of supply. First principle is right quality. The housekeeping department is responsible for providing guests with clean, comfortable, safe, attractive, and luxurious environment. To meet and exceed guest expectations in this regard, the department need to buy the best product. Value for the money is a factor in each of the products supplied to the guest room and public areas. Next is a right quantity. Placing a purchase order of the right quantity is the utmost importance of any organization. The following factors should be kept in mind when ordering the right quantity material. The cost of the order being placed, quantity discount, buffer stock, budgetary control, stock level. Next is right price. One of the major concern for the housekeeping and the purchase department is to get the material at the right price. An in-depth knowledge of market is a vital to make sure that the right price is being paid. That is the payment correspond to the exact value of the material purchase. Next principle is the right time. The material should be made available at the right time. Lead time which is the period between the indent in the end originating from the consumer department to the instant when the material is ready for use should be minimum. The time should also be right as regards ensuring immediate availability of a particular product in the market. Next principle is right source of supply. The right source of supply is critical to execution of other principles of purchasing. If the source is right the right quantity and quality, at the right price and the right time and place are natural consequences. The selection of the ideal supplier is a crucial for both the housekeeping and purchase department. Next slide explains about the selecting a new supplier. When selecting new supplier it is essential to have a full details of the firm and the range of items they are selling. First is copies of a recent price list. Next is details of a trading terms. Third is purchase style. Next is details of the customers and samples of the product. Next is stages in purchasing procedure. First is pre-order stage. Second is post-order stage. Pre-order stage. The following steps are involved in the pre-order stage of a purchasing. Receipt of purchase indent. The indent should be checked for the specifications, quantity required, the last supplier and the last supplier's rate. If any clarification is required, it should be referred to the intenting entity at once. Floating of inquiries. Where there is only one manufacturer of a particular product, it is it better to contact that manufacturer straight away. Instead of approaching commissioned agents or traders, the inquiry should contain complete information. Procurement of a samples for approval. The concerned people in the organization must approve of the samples before an order is finalized. Quotation. The order should be placed with the right supplier who was the identified on the base of the right quotation for the right quality. Next slide explains about the post-order stages. The following states are involved in the post-order stage. Issue of purchase order. The purchase order should be issued once the pre-order stage is complete, and the right supplier has been identified. Since it is a legal contract between the buyer and supplier, 
The purchase order should include all the details of the transaction. It should have the date of issue, purchase order number, expected date of delivery, specification of the product, brand, date of a manufacturer, and so on. Also, delivery instructions should be clearly mentioned, including packaging, mode of transport and charges, time of delivery. Terms of payment should be clearly spelled out. Confirmation of a receipt of purchase order. The supplier should confirm receipt of the purchase order in writing. A duplicate copy of the order should be signed, acknowledging and accepting all the terms and conditions of the purchase. Follow-up. There should be a regular follow-up to ensure that the items requested will be delivered on time. Dispatch advice. A dispatch advice note should be sought from the supplier to expedite the process of receipt. Receipt note. When the items are received in good condition and found to meet the desired standards after inspection, receiving departments to make out a good receipt note before transferring them to the main store. If the item from not match the standards prescribed on the purchase order, the purchase manager and the supplier are intimated immediately and the goods are rejected. Payment. After the goods have been received and transferred to the department concerned, through main store. The purchase department has the important information on following up on payment. The purchase cycle is the period of time during which a consumer typically uses the amount of a product purchased at one time. The first stage is need. There are various types of a needs, depending upon various criteria such as urgent or regular, repetitive or non-repetitive needs, strategic or operational needs. Next is a specification of need. In this we have to specify the size, quantity, price, quality of the product, timing and a speed in which we require that particular material. Next is budget allocation. Before a requester begins requisition for a goods or services the requester must verify the funds are available for the purchase. If adequate funds are not available in the appropriate account a budget adjustment must be made before initiating a requisition. Next step is requisition. The department concerned in need of a material usually present a complete requisition form. There are different types of requisition used are, standard requisition, traveling requisition, bill of material. Once the requisition will place, we have to a request for quotation. Quotation is also called as a tender. And quotation is a proposal for a prospective vendor who has quoted in response to the a request for quotation sent to him by the purchaser. It contains price offered by the vendors, as also the terms and conditions of the sale as per the policy of the window. Next stage is determine sources. Requester may select any vendor by any method of a choosing. Investigate alternative sources for a product introduced by an unsolicited phone call. Such items are common the overpriced or of a poor quality. Beware of anyone not willing to clearly identify himself or herself and the vendor he or she represents. Next step is prepare and issue the purchase order. A purchase order is the official document issued and signed by the proper purchasing authority before a purchase transaction begins with the supplier of a goods and services. Next is following the order. Once the order is given, the following up is very important for the items to be received on the time. Next stage is receive and inspect. It is done by both the receiving and housekeeping department. Orders are delivered to the requested department as soon as the orders received. Inspect the order for completeness. Inspect the items for damages or missing parts. Verify the items received corresponding exactly to the items that have been ordered. Next is, update all records and close the order after payment. Further we have to monitor the consumption. Once the item is received, the information is sent to the respective department. Item is kept in the store, as and when the departments send the indent, the items are issued. Generally a particular day of a week is fixed for each department for issue of items. Now, we will have a look on a various types of purchase. Formal buying. It is a process whereby a underwritten submit a sealed bid to the issuer. Formal quotation are invited from the seller against the written specification for each item to be purchased. Contract purchasing, where a purchaser agrees to buy goods or equipment to be paid for a series of installments, each comprising a proportion of the capital and interest element. 
Wholesale buying is the purchase at the one time and often at a reduced price, of a large quantity for particular commodity. It is also known as a bulk purchasing. Next type is a blanket order purchasing. In which a purchase order that is valid for a specified period of time, and authorizes multiple orders during that time period, as long as the total money on the PO is not exceeded. Next type is cash on delivery buying. This system involves payment on acceptance of the delivery of a goods. This is the format of purchase order form. We will learn about the receiving procedure. In receiving procedure, first, inspect items against purchase order for quantity requested. Then inspect items against delivery invoice. Accept product by signing invoice, and send items to approve store. Receiving department, then prepares goods receipt note, which is sent to the department concerned to appraise the arrival of goods. Now we will learn, about the storage of items in store. Racks must be stainless steel to avoid rusting. Racks must be have legs approximately allow 6 to 8 inches from the ground, to protect the goods from the floor moisture and pest. Racks must be placed at the center of the storeroom. If there is an available space, then 8 centimeters must be kept away from the wall. Floor must be corn crib or should not be slippery. The store must be pest control periodically. There must be an adequate space for racks, also for loading and unloading and cleaning. Heavier packages must be kept on a lower shelves and lighter ones on a higher shelves. Items like cleaning supplies, detergent, and chemicals, must never be stored in a food-related stores. There must be only one entrance and exit to avoid theft. Ventilators and exhaust fans should be provided for air circulation. Next slide explains about bin card and its format. Bin card provided for each individual type of amenities held in a stock, and record all the deliveries and issues made. The card being fixed on the shelves, or rack against each amenity. Thank you.